It started as it always does with an idea, a crazy one, and moving things around. In this case, I knew that the amount of sun that I'd have, especially on cloudy days during the winter in Minnesota here, wouldn't quite be enough to keep my greenhouse as warm as I'd like it to be. So, in goes my rain barrel to serve as a uh, heat reservoir, and what we're going to be doing in the rest of this video is converting an old filing cabinet into a wood-burning water heater. So, after I've got that in there squared away and the cable unwrapped from the tube, let's cut to the action that I'm certain you're here for. So I picked up this old W.P. Johnson company. Shout out to the folks down there in, in Iowa. Uh, filing cabinet at the curb. Um, although it was through FreeCycle, I think. Uh, either that or Craigslist. And so, new angle grinder. Time to try and get the paint off of this thing. Now it's time to drill a 4 inch hole so that we can fit the 4 inch ductwork fitting into the top of the filing cabinet. And will you look at that? Perfect fit on the first try. Very nice. I want to show you something here, so um, give us a moment to get the camera set up right with a light source. This flange needs to be mechanically stable, so these little fingers on the bottom need to be folded directly all the way so that they're as flush as possible with the underside of the metal piece here. Uh, the metal piece being the top of the filing cabinet. Still get a kick out of saying that. And now we introduce our flange to our stovepipe. Now it's time to drill the holes for two bushings that are going to allow for the copper pipe from the heat exchanger to pass through. And then we install the bushings by just screwing them in place with a nut on the back. These plastic clips are just going to melt once we get the fire going, so um, we'll have to figure out how they're in there and then take them out. And now it's just a matter of installing the copper tubing coil for our heat exchanger, and that just has to be pulled out through both the bushings in the front. Then we just tighten down the sleeves of the bushings, and away we go.
We want the heat exchanger to have a bit of thermal mass to keep all of the pipe even, especially because of the fact that we want to create a thermal gradient from one end to the other of that tubing. So we're going to use about 50 pounds of sand to pack that in and create a bit of thermal mass. Time now for the most fun part, the test burn! touch the input side, which is inputting less than a gallon per minute, just a trickle siphoning out the barrel that's inside the greenhouse. And this side feels like it's probably around 150 Fahrenheit, so what, 70, 80 degrees C. So you can see the water is steaming as it comes out. So not only do we have a thermal siphon, going, but we also have a regular siphon feeding water in, and this side actually feels cold, so that's at about 25 degrees C. This side's a good bit higher, and that's exactly what we want. So things seem to be heating up a bit with the uh, wood stove side of things, so I will start the uh, water circulation now. Check first. Yeah. Pipes are getting warm. Now in here. Right now this is all manual, but that's gonna change soon. Just have to open the valve. Feel the warmth already. That's good. And our plants in here. It's a little bit of a mess because I'm in between project steps here, but plants need a little bit of water. Hopefully, I'll get to plant that plant of spinach that I'm hoping for today. Apparently been above freezing all night, so that's good. We're at 38.5 in here. So no frost in the greenhouse. Woohoo! Now it's time to just add a little bit more wood onto the fire. I guess I should say some wood because that was mostly paper and cardboard to begin with. Start laying the charcoal for the last one. Catch soon and off to the races. 